Let's take a look at the Roto node now. So I'm going to drag my source up into the trees window and make a new session. And I'll call this one Rotoscoping. It's picked up the session size from the source material. So I'm just going to hit OK on that. And let's play us back. And here is our material. Now what we're going to do is we're going to rotoscope out the top of this bow. So the first thing I'm going to do is find my roto node. This is under silhouette, or we can also come into the search here, type in roto, and there it is. And let's just bring that inside here. So now that we have our roto node active, on the left hand side, we have our roto tools available to us. We also have our roto specific views, output, foreground, background, composite, and channels. We're going to leave this on output for now. So let's take a closer look at our bow as we start to work with it. And we can zoom in and out on our viewer in a number of different ways. We can either use the zoom modes up in the top right hand corner of the viewer. So we can zoom into 100% or 200%. And then we can use our space bar, hold the space bar down to pan around. Alternatively, we can use the I and O keys to zoom in and out on the viewer and the F key to fit to view. As we're zooming in, where we've got our arrow is the object where we're going to be zooming into. So I've wanted to look at the finger. I'd have my arrow pointed over the finger now. But in this case, I'm looking at the bow. So I have the cursor over the bow in, in, and that brings me into the right area. Now we have a number of different tools for creating our roto shapes. We have our basic square and our basic circle. And if I hold down shift on either of those, then that will constrain them so they're a perfect square or perfect circle. Otherwise it could just be an oval of any size. But I also have my Bezier tool. So I click and drag. And if you've worked with the pen tool in Photoshop, or the masking tool in After Effects, then you'll be quite familiar with a Bezier tool. What it is, it's a tool with one control point and two handles. And the handle controls how it slopes in and out of that control point. And if I click on my first control point again, that will close the shape up. And I can change the weighting of the handles by clicking and dragging on them. I have two other ways of making splines. I have the B spline, which only has one control point. And then as I, as I close that shape up, what happens is the curve is now created from the weighting on the other points. And if I hold down the Alt key, I can add more weight or take weight away from that control point here. So if you imagine a piece of string wrapped around nails on a board, what you're doing essentially here is tightening or loosening that string there. So the B spline only has one control point, as does the X spline, which is the third type for Rosa spline. And again, this only has one control point as well. But if I add or remove weighting on one control point, you'll see that it doesn't affect the other points as it does on the B spline. You see that's affecting the entire shape there. But if I add or remove weight onto the X spline, the effects are limited around that single point. If I right click, I can change that into a corner point, cardinal. I can even center it between the two points on the left and right. The X spline and the B spline are great for organic roto because when we're animating this stuff up, Instead of having to worry about three points as we do on the Bezier spline, we only have to worry about a single point and waiting, and that is a lot easier to animate up. We've now created five different shapes, and we can see those in our object list. So in the object list, we're controlling how these things start to blend together, and we'll look at this in just one moment. But if I select all of these first and just delete them, Let's get rid of those and look now at our first shape. So I'm going to come in, I'm going to use the X spline, and I'm just going to create a single shape that goes around the right hand side of the bow. And then just use Alt and click. 
just to reshape that so that it all fits in very nicely. Lovely. So if we move to the top hand right of the viewer now, we can see the different channels that we have available to us. So we see the red, the green, the blue, and the alpha channel. And we can get a nice alpha overlay to see where we are to see if we need to move this about or add anything to it. Changing the overlay opacity right here. So 40% at the moment, if I change that to 20%, we get a slightly softer overlay. If I click on the white bar above here, I just move back to the RGB channel. I can also use the A keyboard shortcut to show us the alpha. So it goes no overlay, hit A once, shows us the overlay, hit A twice, shows us the alpha channel. Coming down, I can also use the object list to change the outline here. So instead of having red on red, I can make this a lovely cyan on red instead. That makes it a little bit easier to see. So I'm going to quickly add in my other shapes here as well. So I'm going to do one shape for the center. And I'm going to do one more shape for the right hand side. And if I shift select multiple objects, I can come in and change those colors there as well. So taking a look at that, excellent. Now all of these are blending together quite nicely. And that's because the blend mode is set to add. So all of these are adding together. If on the other hand, I come to my center point here, let's call this one middle bow. Let's rename this just by double clicking on the name and I'll go this to bow right, bow middle, bow left. If I go to the uh, middle of the bow here and change my blend mode just by clicking on it, I can change that to subtract or multiply, difference, max, minimum. And you can see those have different ways of blending those together. And for this one, I just want to add these all together, so I'll set this to add. Now if we move further along in the timeline, you'll see the bow actually moves around a little bit. So move this to frame 147. You can see the bow isn't lining up anymore because there was a slight camera move. So now I need to shift all of these slightly to the right. Now I could come in and I could start to move points in individually, but that wouldn't be a good idea. Because if we start to move points individually, it's a very big risk that we're gonna start to get a bit of judder when we watch that animation back. So it's a much better idea to take these types of shapes and move them as a whole because that reduces the risk of getting any sort of chatter in the map. And I don't have to just move one, I can move all three just by shift selecting in the object list and then moving into our transform tool. And then the transform tool has a bounding box now that goes around all of these shapes. And if I can, and I can move them slightly over to the right. I can also do if I move over to the different points here, I can scale this up and down horizontally and vertically. If I hold down the control or command key on Mac, I can also rotate these around. And if I hold down the alt or option key, I can use this to distort the image in. This is a much better way of getting smooth and consistent animation in your roto work. And if we have a look underneath the viewer here, we can see I've got a keyframe at the start and I've got a keyframe where I just made that change. So that's animating smoothly between those two keyframes. At this point now, I'm gonna cut out her thumb using another shape. So I'm gonna come in and let's just draw the shape up. I'm just gonna hit A twice just to turn us out of the overlay view and just do a very quick there we go. So A again to move us back into overlay view and we can see what's going on. Now it's actually a bit tricky to see what's going on now because of all the outlines. So if I come up to the top of the viewer one more time, I can turn my outlines off and we can see just the overlay here. Let's turn this back up to 40. Cool. So let's rename this in my objects, call this one thumb. And I want to cut this out of the overall shape. So I'm going to change my blend mode now, click on it once, change it to subtract. You see here we have a hard edge. If I don't want a hard edge, we can come over with our thumb, selecting the object view, and just add a little bit of blur to that. There we go, just about one point of blur. 
Now already we have quite a few objects in our object list and this is going to start to get even more complex as we start to build up bigger projects. So we can easily start to organize these out a little bit. I'm selected, I've shift selected the three bows and I can drag these now to my add layer button at the bottom. And this will then put these all in one layer, which I will call bow. I can close that up. It's also put it over the top of the thumb, which means that the thumb is now not cutting it out anymore. So if I drag that down to the bottom in my object list, we have our thumb cut out one more time. And that's a brief overview of the Roto node in Silhouette V6.